Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Another glorious day to praise our Lord and Savior. So we're going to start with a hymn from Soul Stirring Songs and Hymns. Um, hymn number 410, Faith is the Victory. Encamped along the hills of light, ye Christian soldiers rise And press the battle ere the night shall veil the glowing skies Against the foe in veils below, let all our strength be hurled Faith is the victory we know That overcomes the world Faith is the victory Faith is the victory, O oh, glorious victory that overcomes the world. Amen. I'm not going to sing the whole song because I want this message to be short and sweet. Um, but we're going to do an opening reading here from 2 Chronicles chapter 17, verses 1 through 6. So if you have a King James Bible, that's what I use. So let's uh, let's get to it. Second Chronicles. Did I say Second Kings? Second Chronicles, chapter seventeen, verse one through six. It says, and Jehoshaphat his son reigned in his stead and strengthened himself against Israel, and he placed forces in all the fenced cities of Judah, and set garrisons in the land of Judah and in the cities of Ephraim, which Asa his father had taken, and the Lord was with Jehoshaphat because he walked in the first ways of his father David, and sought not unto Balaam, but sought to the Lord of his father, and walked in his commandments, and not after the doings of Israel. Therefore the Lord established the kingdom in his hand. And all Judah brought to Jehoshaphat presents, and he had riches and honor and abundance. And his heart was lifted up in the ways of the Lord. Moreover, he took away the high places and groves out of Judah. The word of the Lord. We're going to come back to this. But <clears throat> greetings, friends and colleagues. It's Sean Elvis. I want to talk today about faith. More specifically, uh, real faith. Or what the Bible calls an unfeigned faith. We're going to read the story together, the rest of this story. Well, not all of it, but um, a good portion of it in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Chapter 20, you know, it, it tells the story of King Jehoshaphat. And he was one of the latter kings of Judah um, before uh, they got taken into captivity. He was a good king. He was uh, arguably one of the best kings um, that there was, uh, mainly because he he was the king who turned everybody back to the Lord. You know, it's one thing to come in and be a good king to people who are already serving God, but he was a king who brought people who weren't serving God back to serving God. So he was definitely a man of faith. So let's look at this story in Second Chronicles chapter 20. And, I'll, and we're just going to read a little bit of it. Um... We're going to go through it verse by verse, and, and we'll see what we can learn about faith. Second Chronicles chapter 20 says, um, chapter 20, right. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Amnon, and with them other beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came, uh, excuse me. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea on this side, Syria, and behold, they be in Hazan Tamar, which is in Gidi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of the cities of Judah they came to seek the Lord. So basically what's happening right here 
is all these nations, Moab and 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 Amnon and um and and uh, all, beyond the side of Syria, all these nations are coming together against Judah, against the King Jehoshaphat's kingdom. And 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 there's so many of them that even though Jehoshaphat's army's strong and and his kingdom's strong, he's following the Lord and, and everything's going good for them, he's scared. It says right here in verse uh I think two or was it verse three? Yeah, verse three, and Jehoshaphat feared. So he, he was feared and he sent himself to seek the Lord. So he called a national wide fast and prayer. Um, that's what's going on so far. Let's continue. Verse 5. Let's continue. Verse 5. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court and said, O Lord, God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Are not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us as a sword, Judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house, and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house. And cry unto thee in our affliction, then thou wilt hear and help. And now, behold, the children of Amnon, and Moab, and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them, and destroyed them not. Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. So Jehoshaphat's given this prayer, this speech, in front of Judah. And he's pleading to the Lord. He's saying, hey, this army is too big for us to manage. Like, it's like a tidal wave. We stand no chance. So right here in this little speech, in this segment, what I see is Jehoshaphat, we could see where his priorities were. You know, he could have asked for assistance from Israel or or other allies that he had. He could have started uh, trying to negotiate his way out of this, this conflict that was coming. He could have started ordering all of his uh, his military and, and, and his armies to prepare for battle. But no, instead, what did he do? He focused on the Lord. He focused and he prioritized his faith. See, he brought everybody into an assembly. And, you know, let this be a lesson to us in our lives. You know, if we're ever going through a trial in our lives, wherever, whatever it may be, or a rough situation, we feel like, you know, the sky is falling. Everybody's against me. You know, that's the time that we need to have the most faith in God. I mean, not to give up, not to trust in our own abilities and try to find out how we could fix the situation. But the first thing we should do the number one priority is go to God. You know, that's what Jehoshaphat did. He called for a fast and he prayed to God, went to the temple. Let's see what happens next. Uh, verse 14. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benia, the son of Jeel, the son of Matania, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, came the spirit of the Lord. In the midst of the congregation. So he's, the Lord is going to speak through this prophet. And he said, Hearken ye all Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord, 
unto you. Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. You know, we, we need to remember that any time we're going through a struggle, if we turn to the Lord, we pray and we fast and we, and we do what's right and we, and we give all his, our problems to Him, He will take our battle and make it His. I mean, think about it. You know, Jehoshaphat was scared. It says up there in verse 3, he was in fear of this huge army coming to destroy him. And, and he was on the verge of losing everything that he's had, his whole kingdom. You know, imagine if I told you that, hey, you know, tomorrow the government's going to come down and they're going to take everything away from you, right? And they're going to throw you in jail and you're not going to have nothing. There's nothing you can do about it. If you were a man of faith, you would turn to God and say, God, I need a miracle. There's no way I can get myself out of this situation. I need you to help me handle this. Because only your power can take care of this. That's what Jehoshaphat basically did. Let's keep reading. Um, starting verse 16. Tomorrow, go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook, before the wilderness of Jeruel. Yet shall not need to fight in this battle. Or, excuse me, ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Could you imagine if, you know, if the president fell on his face and worshiped the Lord? You know, I, I, can't, I couldn't imagine it, right? I just watched the presidential debates last night. And, you know, I, I don't think God's name, the name of Jesus, was mentioned one time. Not one time, except for maybe when they were saying some blasphemy, like, oh, oh my God, right? But anyway, let, let's skip down to verse 20. We're, we're about done with this story. So let's skip down to verse 20 and uh, see what happens next. Uh says, yeah, we're going to skip 19, go to 20. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. Believe his prophets so shall ye prosper. Wow. That was the king's advice. That was King Jehoshaphat's advice. How are we going to win this battle? He said, have some faith. Believe in the Lord your God. You know, that's what we need to do in our lives. You know, whenever we want to watch TV instead of reading our Bible, right? Or, or we want to do our hobbies or go out and do whatever we want to do instead of preaching the gospel, you know, Maybe it's because we just don't have enough faith. We just don't believe that those things are what we should be prioritizing. You know, maybe we don't have the faith to truly sacrifice what our flesh desires and do the right thing. But what did the king say? Believe in the Lord your God. But Sean, you don't understand. How, how am I going to pay my bills if I don't go to work, you know? You really think God's not powerful enough to pay your bills? Right? What's more important? Getting the sin out of your life, doing what God says, obeying the commandments, or going to work. You know, remember, Jesus said, He said, what, whatsoever, and I'm paraphrasing, but He said, whatsoever shall cause your right hand to sin, cut it off. Chop it off. You know, we need to believe in the Lord, your God, so shall ye be established. Let's keep reading, verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord, and that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army, and to say, Praise the Lord, for his mercy endureth forever. I mean, bro, come on. 
Come on. He he sent singers into the battle first. Now that took some faith, right? I mean, to me, if I'm the leader of an army, I'm not sending my singers <laughs> as the spear point to my army, right? I mean, they could be in the back, but not in the front. But he's sending them in the front. You know, to me, up until this point, Jehoshaphat has not proven his faith. But I mean, come on, at this point, when he's sending in the... <laughs> that takes some faith, right? He's singing victory songs before the battle has even started, right? He's saying, thank you, God, for this victory. It's like, it hasn't even started yet. That's the faith that I want to get to in my life. You know, when, when you're so excited about God's greatness and, and, and his power and his majesty, you know, before things even happen, that you're singing about it, that's some faith. You know, I mean, for us, uh, for, uh, for those of us who are believers in Jesus, you know, we know we're going to heaven, right? We know God has already won victory over our death. And, you know, so some things in our life, you know, may come in and get us down for whatever for whatever reason. But it's like, you know, what are we doing, right, if we're sad about it? You know, we should still be rejoicing. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, there's always a time and a season to be sad. I mean, even Jesus wept, right? But, but seriously, you know... Um, when, when we're praising God with a true faith, it's because we know it's going to happen. You know, that's how much faith we have. Let's finish up this story, uh, verse 22. And when, and when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, set ambushments against the children of Amnon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. For the children of Amnon and, Mo and Moab stood against the inhabitants of Mount Seir utterly to, to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one helped to destroy another. And when Judah came towards uh, the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, they were dead bodies fallen to the earth, and none escaped. Just as the Lord said, right? Just as he told them what happened. All they had to do was kick back and watch their enemies destroy themselves. And you know, that's another point I wanted to make. You know, if, if you focus on reading your Bible and singing songs to the Lord and praying, you're not going to have time for the nonsense that's going around in the world and all the enemies coming around and trying to destroy you. You're going to be too busy praising God. And then you're going to look back and suddenly your enemies are... They're done for, right? God already took care of them. You know, because let me tell you what's going to happen when you start focusing on, on, on serving the Lord. You know, your enemies are going to start fighting amongst themselves because you're, you're not going to be fighting with them anymore. You're out of that. You're serving God. They're over here, so they turn and fight against each other. You know, so often we get caught up trying to prove that we can defeat our enemies, that, oh, I'm stronger than you, and we get distracted, you know, from the fact that, you know, just focus on God. Just focus on God and God will take care of everything else in your life. I mean, just like Jehoshaphat said to God, right? He said, God, you're so powerful. You can defeat them. That's what we need to be like. We need to have the faith of Jehoshaphat. Remember, in the start, he was afraid. But I don't think he was afraid at this point. When the battle started, Jehoshaphat wasn't afraid anymore. He had faith that took away his fear. So I'm going to close the story there. Um, but I, you know, I first, I wanted to tell a story of like when I first got into the Bible and I first got into religion, you know, the first time I had faith, I didn't have all the knowledge that I have now. Right. I didn't know how to preach. I didn't even read my Bible. You know, I just, I knew the basics, right? Jesus died for me. He loved me, forgave me, all that stuff. Right. But over time, you know, I had to study to learn things, right? See, when you get born again, you're like a child. You're like a child and, and everything's new and it's exciting. But over time, you kind of lose that excitement. So the trick is, you know, how do you keep that excitement of a child over time? That's what everybody wants to know, right? Where's the fountain of youth? So what I'm trying to say is, you know, everybody who starts off in the faith believes based on faith, not something they can prove. Um, so I want to look at uh, a short verse in 2 Timothy, where Paul's writing to a, a young believer, 
uh, Timothy um, chapter 1, verse 5 through 6 says, When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Louise, and thy mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that, it, that in thee also, wherefore I put thee in remembrance, that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by, putting, by the putting on of my hands. See, Paul recognized Timothy has an unfeigned faith, a real faith. Unfeigned means real. You know, if, you, if you've ever uh, heard the term faint, the boxing term, right? It means to give a fake punch. Like I'm going to fake with the right and then I'm going to hit you with the left. Um, so we see here in 1 Timothy that we need to have an unfeigned faith. And another thing about having an unfeigned faith is you need to put on hands. Go, go. And, and, and encourage your brothers, encourage your sisters. You know, that's one way that you could strengthen your faith as well as your brothers and sisters. Galatians chapter 6 verse 9 says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Not the same word, but very similar. In meaning, you know, the Bible tells us, God God is telling us, don't be fake. Don't have a fake faith, just like Jehoshaphat. He sent out his singers and his trumpets into the battle first. He didn't send out the archers. He didn't send out the battle chariots and, and the axes and whatever. I mean, you could just imagine all his generals and all his captains under him were like, is this guy serious? He's actually sending out the trumpets first. The band's supposed to be in the back, king. <laughs> but the king, he was like, no, no, no. Our faith rests in the Lord. He wasn't even trying to fight. He wasn't faking his faith. He actually meant it. You see, the Bible's telling us that we need to have a genuine faith. Not to put on a show and make it appear like we have some faith. And, and you know, it doesn't matter how much faith you have. You could have just this much faith. But the Bible emphasizes that even though it can, your faith is as small as a grain of mustard seed, you could move entire mountains. As long as it's genuine faith. As long as your mustard seed is planted in the right spot. As long as you're worshiping the right God. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of the Bible. Your faith will grow. 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5 says, now the end of the commandment is charity, out of a pure heart, and of good conscience, and of faith unfeigned. Faith unfeigned. That's what my uh, message which is about today. Paul's telling Timothy, I want you to remember that faith, the faith you had as a child when you first believed, Back in the beginning, when you first got saved, think of how exciting you, everything was. Every piece of knowledge that you learned. Don't lose that. Don't fall into the rut of making the mistake uh, of, of losing your first love, right? Teaching God's Word and reading the Bible is not a chore. It's something that we want to do. We cannot cast off our first faith. That's what the Bible means when it talks about being on fire for the Lord. It means you're, you're doing it not because you have to do it, but because you sincerely want to do it. And it's important because sooner or later, persecutions are going to come. Um, just like they came after uh, Jehoshaphat, right? And if you're faking it, when that day comes, you're not going to fast, you're not going to call for an assembly and turn to the Lord. You're going to crumble. You're going to fall. So anyway, friends, that's my message for the day. It's, ra it's rather simple, but yet one of the most difficult things and important things that we need to do is uh, have an unfeigned faith. You know, not just to uh, say words, but, but back it up with actions from the heart. You know, because this life, it's filled with distractions. 
And a lot of times, you know, they aren't even sinful distractions, but, you know, the devil knows that if he could just get us to focus on the battle and not on the Lord, that he could uh, sway our faith just a little bit, he can destroy us. But anyway, let's not give him that opportunity. Let's keep our focus on serving God today. And, you know, the devil, he won't stand a chance as long as we're focusing on the Lord. Friends, that's my message for the day. Um, you guys have a wonderful one, and God bless you. As always, I'm going to close in prayer, and then I'm going to give God the last word, and I think I'll be doing a reading from uh, the Gospel according to St. Luke, St. Luke chapter 6. So, let's let's bow in prayer. Let's bow in prayer. Lord, thank you for uh, using my voice today to teach this message about faith. Father, I just want to pray for all the brothers and sisters out there today. Lord, I ask that you strengthen their faith. Strengthen my faith too, Lord. Lord, we know that you're capable of doing greater things than we can even imagine. Lord, we'd love to see those things. and Lord, we're sorry for the times that we don't acknowledge your power and your majesty. I know that I don't always think of the thoughts that I should think or treat people the way that I should treat them. Lord, help us to treat each other with the love that you showed us and give us the faith to believe in you, Lord, that our sacrifice makes a difference. Lord, maybe sometimes we're afraid of what people will say about us or think about us. Lord, just help, help us remember we have nothing to fear. Because you're our, you're our God. Jesus, we thank you for giving us an example of what true faith is. And we thank you for giving us this story of Jehoshaphat that we can learn from. Father, we love you. We thank you for all that you do. Keep us all safe today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. God's getting the last word. Luke chapter 6. Verses uh, 46 through the end. God bless. And these are the words of Jesus. <clears throat> Why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me, and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house, and digged deep, and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon the, on that house, and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth, and doeth not, is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth, against which the stream did beat vehemently, and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. The word of the Lord. Amen.